Well, hey, everyone. This is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. It is a groundbreaking brewer, no pun intended. Um, it is truly revolutionizing what we can expect from batch brew coffee. The SCA award-winning technology gives you consistent control over a range of flavors in your coffee that um, you never thought possible. I personally tasted the range that this brewer can coax out of coffee, and it's simply amazing. And more than a brewer, for coffee, it can also brew tea, hot chocolate, batched iced lattes, uh, make cold brew. And so having a versatile machine like this that also raises the game on your batch brew quality is an incredible asset, especially in these times where versatility and control are some of the main things that we need to be focusing on in our retail businesses. So if you're looking for quality, versatility, and control all wrapped up into one fantastic machine, then you need to look into getting the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. Go find out more information about getting this in your store over at vogacoffee.com. That's V-O-G-A coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly. Espressly works with independent coffee shops to help them develop their very own beautifully designed, elegantly functional, branded mobile app. Um, let's face it, you work a lot on building your brand and running your business, employing great people. And it's all part of this experience that people love about your shop. And you need tools to help people have a fast, convenient checkout while also not giving up that experience that they love. And this is why Espressly exists. They want to extend that experience to your own branded and custom-built app so you can have the best of both worlds. Yeah, It's a no-risk model. No setup fee or development fees. Uh, it integrates with Square, has a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities, stores value in the app. Espressly exists to serve you, the independent coffee shop, to help you bring together the convenience of mobile ordering with the experience your customers know and love through having your own branded mobile app. So I would encourage you to learn more and sign up today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to discuss uh, self-awareness a little bit. And this is uh, something I've been thinking about since being interviewed myself for the How of Business podcast. The interview is going to be coming out next week on Monday. I had recently interviewed Henry Lopez, who runs that podcast on this show. The episode is The Five Best Practices for the Best Small Business. Definitely worth listening to. Um, but in this discussion, we were talking about entering into the coffee business. And as I mentioned recently in a LinkedIn a post about the problem of ease of access into the coffee industry, and also talked about this with James Hoffman on episode 242 recently. Um, one of the problems with ease of access is specifically that people who have ease of access into the industry, who just think I'm going to start a coffee shop and they just do it, are also tending to be the less self-aware among us. And the reason why they're less self-aware is because they've had fewer tests within the context of entrepreneurship. Uh, or at least fewer tests within this particular context of entrepreneurship. Like you could have run a widget company or you know sold things online or whatever, and that you have some business chops in that respect. But running a group of you know twenty somethings uh, and serving the public and working in a coffee bar and running a coffee bar is a completely different animal. And if you haven't worked in the service industry, it's usually a great idea to do so. But the fact of the matter is one of the major things that causes toxicity down the road for everybody in a business is when the leaders from the very beginning start with a very low level of self-awareness. Um, it's not just that they're self-aware. It's that their lack of self-awareness also causes them to not be aware of other people in the nuances of the, their humanity in the midst of work. So if you personally, as a owner, cannot confront truths about yourself in a candid, regular way, then when those things get brought up, 
it will be a shock to you. And that shock usually is met with defensiveness, denial, um, and explosions, etc. And the same happens when you when you are confronted with the faults of other people, your managers, your baristas, they fail, they're human, and their humanness, because you're not in touch with your own, is a shock to you. And so when you combine those two things together, you get companies where people walk out of the coffee bars we've seen multiple times in the last couple of years. Just a lot of unnecessary toxicity coming from a lack of self-awareness. And I would say this, Colin Harmon in his book, What I Know About Running Coffee Shops, fantastic book, um, past guest on the show as well, uh, he saw, he is an advocate that you work in coffee before starting a coffee shop. I agree 100%. Um, even more so, uh, if you can't get a job in coffee, getting a job where you are regularly serving the public, getting a job where you get the opportunity to confront your own demons, your own shortcomings, etc., that is critical that you develop a habit of self-awareness in some form, even if you didn't work in coffee specifically before working in a coffee shop, at least you have practice examining yourself. And then when you are uh, working with people, which is a huge part of working, uh, running a coffee bar, you're not going to be overreacting to things that are simply, uh, that aren't necessarily warranting reactions like that. They're just unfamiliar to you. Um, you study yourself, you're basically studying other people too. And it creates more harmony down the road when you can pursue and practice regular self-awareness as an owner. So I wanted to drive that home as I've been thinking about it since discussing it a little bit with James Hoffman this week on the show, uh, discussing it with Henry uh, for his show next week. It's a thing that's really easy to assume that you have uh, and that yeah, I know myself pretty well and then kind of dive into it. But unless you've spent some real focused time and even had other people's input on that, then you're not really going to know. I really think we should doubt ourselves more than we do a bit. Be skeptical of your own uh, assessment of whether or not you're self-aware. That's not the same thing as not being confident. It's just checking, okay? <laughs> it's really worth doing. And when we talk about self-awareness, it is such an overused word, but it's also very under-practiced. So that is it for today's show. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop. <laughs>